Nigeria vs South Africa. Which country is better for investment? Being an African country on the West Coast, Nigeria's terrain is diverse, with climates ranging from dry to humid tropical. Nigeria's people, on the other hand, are its most diversified aspect. Yoruba, Igbo, Fula, Hausa, Ido, Ibibio, Tiv, and English are among the hundreds of languages spoken in the country. Natural resources abound throughout the country, including substantial amounts of petroleum and natural gas. Abuja, the national capital, is located in the Federal Capital Territory, which was established in 1976 by decree. Lagos, the historic capital, continues to be the country's most important commercial and industrial center. Nigeria is bordered by Niger to the north, Chad and Cameroon to the east, the Gulf of Guinea of the Atlantic Ocean to the south, and Benin to the west. Nigeria is Africa's most populated country, with an area larger than Texas in the United States. South Africa, on the other hand, since the formal end of apartheid, Afrikaans, apartness or racial separation, in 1994, has been a popular tourist destination due to its varied topography, immense natural beauty, and cultural diversity. For much of the 20th century, South Africa's isolation, it is thousands of miles from major African cities like Lagos and Cairo and more than 6,000 miles, 10,000 km, from most of Europe, North America, and Eastern Asia, where its major trading partners are located. This helped to reinforce the official apartheid system. South Africa now has a very stable mixed economy that benefits from its lush agricultural lands, abundant mineral resources, tourism attractions, and highly developed intellectual capital. However, greater political equality and economic stability may not always imply social harmony. At the turn of the century, South African society faced numerous challenges, including rising crime rates, ethnic tensions, large inequities in housing and educational possibilities, and the AIDS pandemic. Hello viewers, welcome to another day of discoveries on Africa Reloaded and thanks for joining us. Today we make a comparison between South Africa and Nigeria to find out which is better in terms of investment or stay. Stay connected as we find these factors like economy, infrastructure, geography and topography, etc., that differentiate one from the other. Geography and Topography Nigeria's terrain is characterized by plains in the north and south, which are punctuated by plateaus and hills in the center. The Sokoto Plains are located in the country's northern corner, while the Borno Plains in the northeastern part stretch all the way to the Lake Chad Basin. Soft, geologically young sedimentary strata underpin the Lake Chad Basin and coastal areas, including the Niger River Delta and western parts of the Sokoto region in the extreme northwest. These locations have gently undulating plains that become wet during the rainy season. The country has a tropical climate, with rainy and dry seasons that vary depending on where you are. The southeast is hot and humid for the majority of the year, whereas the southwest and deeper interior are dry. The north and west have a savanna climate with distinct wet and dry seasons, whereas the extreme north has a steppe environment with limited precipitation. South Africa on its part is bordered on the northwest by Namibia, on the north by Botswana and Zimbabwe, and on the northeast and east by Mozambique and Swaziland. Lesotho is an independent country located in the Republic's eastern region, completely surrounded by South African territory. South Africa's coastlines are bordered to the southeast by the Indian Ocean and to the southwest by the Atlantic Ocean. Prince Edward and Marion, two small subantarctic islands in the Indian Ocean about 1,200 miles, 1,900 km, southeast of Cape Town, are owned by the government. The Great Escarpment separates the plateau from neighboring areas of relatively lower elevation, which encompasses the majority of the country and dominates the landscape. The plateau is almost entirely made up of very old Karoo system rock that dates from the late Carboniferous to the late Triassic Epoch, approximately 320 to 300 million years ago. The plateau decreases from elevations of more than 8,000 feet, 2,400 meters, 
in the basaltic Lesudu region to roughly 2,000 feet 600 meters, in the sandy Kalahari region in the west. Economy of Nigeria Nigeria has one of Africa's greatest economies. It has been predominantly based on the petroleum industry since the late 1960s. Since 1973, a succession of increases in global oil prices has resulted in strong economic expansion in transportation, building, industry, and government services. As a result of the enormous inflow of rural people into the larger cities, agricultural production stagnated to the point where cash crops like palm oil, peanuts, and cotton were no longer important export commodities. Furthermore, starting around 1975, Nigeria was compelled to import basic foods like rice and cassava for domestic consumption. This system worked well as long as petroleum earnings remained stable, but due to fluctuating world oil prices and the country's rapid population expansion, the agriculture sector has been in continuous difficulty since the late 1970s. Despite the fact that many people continued to farm, there was insufficient food production, necessitating increasingly expensive imports. Various governments, mostly military-run, have addressed this issue by prohibiting agricultural imports and focusing, if momentarily, on various agriculture and indigenization initiatives. Economy of South Africa South Africa's economy is Africa's third largest, as well as the continent's most industrialized, technologically advanced, and diverse economy. South Africa is one of just eight countries in Africa with an upper-middle income economy. Following the lifting of international sanctions in 1996, South Africa's gross domestic product, nominal, then tripled, reaching a high of US$416 billion in 2011. Within two decades of the end of apartheid, foreign exchange reserves climbed from US$3 billion to approximately US$50 billion, resulting in a diversified economy with a growing and sizable middle class. Although the natural resource extraction industry remains one of the country's largest, contributing US$13.5 billion to GDP annually, South Africa's economy has diversified since apartheid ended, with a focus on services. The financial sector contributed $41.4 billion to South Africa's GDP in 2019. South African financial institutions managed around US$1.41 trillion in assets in 2021. As of October 2021, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange's entire market capitalization was US$1.28 trillion. South Africa's state-owned businesses, SOs, play a vital part in the country's economy, with the government owning a stake in roughly 700 SOE in a variety of industries. In 2016, inefficient government bureaucracy, tight labor restrictions, a shortage of skilled personnel for several high-tech businesses, political instability, and corruption were the top five hurdles to conducting business in the country. The banking industry, on the other hand, was evaluated as a significant positive feature of the economy. The country is a member of the G20 and the only African country in the organization. Infrastructure of Nigeria Nigeria's infrastructure includes highways, railroads, airports, and communication networks. The road system is by far the most important component of the country's transportation network, transporting around 95% of all commodities and passengers. Because of poor upkeep and years of excessive traffic, many of the roads are currently in disrepair. Infrastructure in South Africa Infrastructure development is critical to achieving rapid economic growth and poverty reduction in South Africa. South Africa has a well-developed core infrastructure network that includes transportation, power, communications, sewage, and water. However, due to substantial socioeconomic inequality, historically underprivileged neighborhoods and rural areas do not have the same acceptable infrastructure as developed towns. The fundamental difference between these communities has an impact not just on the people who live there, but also on South Africa's economic progress. 
Tourism is a substantial contributor to Nigeria's economy, which has been gradually growing in recent years. In 2017, tourism figures increased by 140.2% compared to 2016. Between 2015 and 2016, there was a 130.3% increase. Two years ago, the statistics had deteriorated. However, more tourists are visiting the country for business and enjoyment, and investors are seeing the region's greater potential. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, the tourism sector contributed 34% of Nigeria's GDP and 20% of the country's job creation in 2017. For African tourism companies, it is a good time to invest in Africa. Standard of living in Nigeria. A meal, such as pressed chicken, suya, or pepper soup, can be purchased for three to five dollars from a street vendor or a local restaurant in Nigeria. Of all, a pricey date at a posh restaurant could cost up to $1.50 per person, including beverages. Keep in mind that as a result of the current recession, the costs of imported beverages served in bars and other common hangout locations have doubled, if not tripled. Larger tray of eggs, 30 eggs, costs around four to five dollars, five pounds of potatoes costs around three dollars, and a bucket of oranges costs around the same. A huge pineapple would cost between two dollar and three dollar meat costs a little higher, and most foreigners in Nigeria shop at ShopRite, a major grocery brand established in South Africa. Standard of living in South Africa. A respectable level of life is related with a monthly salary of roughly 7,000 rand per person, according to a 2018 study. This has been revised using a subset of the CPI and now amounts to 7,541 rand per person per month in 2020. This is the median per capita household income of people in South Africa who own a set of indicative things that are widely recognized as necessary for a decent standard of living. Material things, neighborhood features, and social networks are among the items. Thanks for watching this video. In comparison of which country is better, I leave you to make your choice following this video. If you love this video, do not hesitate to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on Africa Reloaded.